being able to visit Israel was such an incredible blessing for me. Seeing so many amazing sights and watching the Word of God come alive by walking through literal Bible history was so exciting. I truly had a blast creating all 28 reviews of the places I visited, which you can find a link in the description below. But narrowing down my favorite sites was incredibly difficult. Many of these sites became my favorites because of what happened here in the past and a couple for what will happen here in the future that's all recorded in the Bible. So which location do you think will come in at number one? Let's find out as we dive into my top 10 favorite sites I visited in Israel. Number 10, Caesarea. Located along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, it was built by King Herod the Great in the late 1st century BC. It was the capital of Israel during the Roman occupation. Whether it's the amphitheater, the hippodrome, or Herod's palace, being here really brought parts of the book of Acts to life. The apostle Peter came here and led the Roman centurion Cornelius to accepting Jesus as Savior. Philip, the evangelist, lived here and was visited by Paul. Herod Agrippa was killed here in the palace that his grandfather Herod the Great built. Also, the Apostle Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, was imprisoned here for two years. One of the biggest findings here was the Pilate Stone, which was the first archaeological finding that proved that Pilate, the one who sentenced Jesus to die, actually existed. Number nine, Dan. Located in the northernmost part of Israel in the Upper Galilee region, Dan is a gorgeous area, but its history, unfortunately, was an ugly one. The tribe of Dan settled here after not fully conquering the area of the land given to them by Joshua, which was originally along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Right from the beginning, the people of Dan started worshiping idols. Then, many years later, after the kingdom of Israel was divided in two, the northern king, Jeroboam, set up a golden calf here at Dan to keep the people from having to travel south to the temple in Jerusalem to worship. This ultimately led to the destruction and the exile of all the people of the northern kingdom. Dan is an example and a warning to us on how easy disobedience and lack of trust and faith in God will eventually lead to utter destruction. Number 8. Masada Located in the dry Judean desert near the Dead Sea, the historical events that took place here in Masada happened in 73 AD. Just like Caesarea, Masada was built by Herod the Great and had many large storerooms for food and weapons, a large bathhouse, a three-tiered northern palace built on the side of the plateau where Herod stayed, a stable that was later converted to a synagogue by the Jewish rebels, and another palace on the western side. During the Jewish revolt against Rome, Masada became the last stronghold of resistance for the Jews against the Romans. 960 people were here at the time when Rome surrounded Masada, and as the Romans finished making a siege ramp to enter the fortress, 953 of the 960 people killed themselves. Two women and five children were the only survivors of this tragedy as they were found hidden in one of the massive cisterns Herod created to collect water for the fortress. Masada is not directly mentioned in the Bible, but may have been referenced in 1 Samuel as a place David may have come to. The destruction of the temple that preceded the events here at Masada was foretold by Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. Today, soldiers who complete basic training for the IDF will climb at night up to the top of Masada, and when they are done being sworn in, will shout, Masada shall not fall again. Number 7. The Mount of Olives Located on the east side of the old city of Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives was once covered with olive trees, but is now home to over a dozen churches, at least 150,000 tombs, and the Palestinian neighborhood of At-Tur. Why did this place make my list? Many events took place on top of the Mount of Olives, and one exciting future event will take place here. King David crossed over the Mount of Olives as he fled Jerusalem when his son Absalom was leading an insurrection against him. David's son and successor, King Solomon, while in his old age, built places of worship to false gods here. In the New Testament, Jesus came up here frequently during his ministry. Jesus taught his Olivet Discourse on the Mount of Olives. Jesus rode a donkey down from the Mount of Olives during his triumphal entry. After Jesus died and resurrected, he ascended to heaven from this location. And the future event I mentioned earlier, this is the location where Jesus will return at his second coming. And when he touches down on the Mount of Olives, it will split in two. Towards the end of my stay, I decided to walk up the Mount of Olives at sunset to get a view of the city at night. And man, it was definitely worth the steep uphill walk. 
Number six, the Dead Sea. Though technically it's not a sea, it's a lake. But the Dead Sea is just that, dead. Nothing lives in the Dead Sea because of the amount of salt in the water. Coming in at 33% salinity, this body of water is one of the saltiest in the world and is nine and a half times as salty as the oceans. Due to the salt level and the high mineral content, people cannot sink in the Dead Sea. They just float. Today, the Dead Sea has been shrinking because the waters are evaporating faster than the Jordan River can replenish it. It has lost 30% of its area since the 1980s. Will it one day evaporate and never be seen again? Not according to the Word of God. In the books of Ezekiel and Zechariah, they describe how a river flowing from the yet-to-be-built Third Jewish Temple will turn the Dead Sea into a sea of life. This will happen during the post-tribulation world after Jesus returns. Number five, the Temple Mount. Though it is controlled today by Muslims, the Temple Mount has played a massive role in Jewish, Christian, and Muslim history and will play a significant role in the future. Today you will find the Dome of the Rock, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and the sealed Eastern Gate. The Dome of the Rock is the most iconic building in Jerusalem. Non-Muslims are not allowed inside, but behind these walls you will find the foundation stone. Jewish tradition believes this stone is where God created Adam and where Abraham offered up Isaac. Bible scholars believe this stone is also where the Ark of the Covenant sat when the Jewish temple was here. In fact, the Old Testament states there were two Jewish temples at this location. The first temple built by King Solomon, but then later destroyed by Babylon, and the second temple built by Zerubbabel, but was later destroyed by the Romans. Ezekiel states there will be a third enormous temple built here and will take place prior to the Great Tribulation. The New Testament records many moments that happened here. Mary and Joseph have Jesus dedicated at the temple. At 12 years old, Jesus was found here astounding the religious leaders. During his ministry, when he was in Jerusalem, Jesus taught at the temple frequently. Jesus chased out the money changers and overturned their tables. When Jesus died on the cross, one of the many things that happened was the veil in the temple separating the Holy of Holies was torn in two. As he was entering the temple, Peter kills a lame beggar. Paul was seized in the temple and arrested, and at the southern portion of the Temple Mount, some believe Pentecost took place here. There are only certain times you can enter the Temple Mount complex, and if you're a non-Muslim, you cannot wear religious clothing or religious jewelry, you cannot bring your Bible, and you cannot openly pray here. It is still a fascinating place to visit, and one day it will be controlled by the Jews once again. Number four, Caesarea Philippi. Named by Herod the Great Son, Philip the Tetrarch. Caesarea Philippi was the capital city in this area that he ruled over after his father died. It was also known as Panaeus after the Greek god Pan, because there is no P in Arabic. The name was changed to Panaeus during the time of the Crusades and still has this name today. The ruins of Caesarea Philippi are located at the foot of Mount Hermon in northern Israel and is about an eight-minute drive east from Dan. Like Dan, this is a beautiful site. But also like Dan, this was a site of some ugly and evil practices of pagan worship. Why would this make it into my top five list? We know based on the Bible that Jesus came here with his disciples. Peter declared Jesus as the Messiah. Then after Jesus predicted his death, Peter objects and Jesus rebukes him. But one interesting part of their conversation was when Jesus declared, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. The Greek word used for overcome is katheskiu, meaning to be superior in strength. In other words, the gates of Hades will not be superior in strength when the church arrives. The gates of Hades was an interesting term because this cave was known as the Grotto of Pan, or the Gates of Hell. Really nasty pagan practices were performed near this cave and really all over the site. Gates are defensive measures to protect something within from some outside forces. So what Jesus is saying in Matthew 16, 18 is the church is supposed to be on the offensive, challenging these evil strongholds in people's lives and throughout the world. The church has the power to break down these gates and infiltrate every dark corner with the light and good news of Jesus. Perhaps I'm just a Bible nerd, but Matthew chapter 16 really came alive for me after visiting here. Number three, the Sea of Galilee. Like the Dead Sea I mentioned before, the Sea of Galilee is technically not a sea, it is a lake. This is another guaranteed place we know Jesus not only traveled on, but also spent a large portion of his ministry around. Jesus climbed into a boat on the Sea of Galilee to teach the people using parables. Here is a first century boat that was excavated from the Sea of Galilee in 1986 
and would have been the type of boat used by Jesus and his disciples. He performed miracles on the Sea of Galilee, like the calming of the storm. His most famous miracle, Jesus walking on water with Peter, took place here. Jesus also performed multiple miracles using fish. Some places in Israel are debatable as to if a certain biblical event took place at an exact location or not, but there is no debate in and on this body of water miracles took place. Number two, Hezekiah's Tunnel. Located in the city of David, or biblical Jerusalem, this tunnel is one of the best examples of seeing the Bible come alive. In the Bible, it's almost mentioned as a footnote in Hezekiah's life. It was only referred to in 2 Chronicles, and barely mentioned specifically in 2 Kings. Hezekiah had this built to have the city's main source of water, the Gihon Spring, to be protected from the Assyrians blocking it off during a siege. The length of the tunnel is 1,750 feet, and the incredible miracle was that Hezekiah commissioned two teams to chisel through the limestone from opposite sides, and they met in the middle. There isn't much else to add here other than this was literally me walking through Bible history. So incredibly cool. And now we're at the end of the list. What is my number one favorite site that I visited in all of Israel? Number one, En Gedi. You might be surprised at this being number one, but this site just hit me differently than all the other sites. Located west of the Dead Sea, En Gedi is an oasis in the middle of the parched landscape of the Judean desert. En Gedi is mentioned a number of times in the Bible. It was given to the tribe of Judah as part of their possession. The Shulamite references En Gedi when describing her love for her husband, King Solomon. King Jehoshaphat was told a large army of Moabites, Ammonites, and Edomites were coming to attack from En Gedi. I briefly mentioned that at the end of the tribulation, that the Dead Sea will become alive with fish from the river that flows from the Third Temple. Ezekiel mentions that fishermen will be standing along the shore of En Gedi, fishing in the newly alive sea. But the most famous story featuring En Gedi is found in 1 Samuel chapter 24. Prior to becoming king, En Gedi was the place David went to when he was hiding from King Saul. Saul found out where David was and came to En Gedi. Then David and his men hid in one of these caves. While hiding in a cave here in En Gedi, David wrote Psalm 57. So, being pursued by 3,000 soldiers and the king of Israel, David didn't choose despair or anguish. He didn't choose griping or complaining. He chose to praise God. We really need to remember this the next time we are facing a battle in our own lives. En Gedi, a place flowing with living water in the midst of a lifeless desert, is a picture to me that God will provide for us even in the most challenging of situations. At times, we spiritually walk through dry desert seasons, but Jesus is there to be our oasis if we genuinely search for him he is there to refresh us and to restore our strength during our troubles and even after those troubles have passed. This concludes my top 10 favorite sites that I visited on my incredible trip to Israel. I really hope you enjoyed it. In my next video, I will reveal my top 10 moments that I personally, emotionally, and spiritually experienced on this fantastic trip to Israel. Until next time, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless.